So the title of the talk is Why School Mathematics Makes No Sense. And it fits in quite nicely with several of my other uh, colleagues here that have shared some ideas with you. And we'll take a walk through history. Uh, so first, let's look at the 19th century, so late 1800s. It was written in the New York Times. The preposterous rules and problems of most books of arithmetic have had the effect of producing an intense hatred of mathematics in about two-thirds of all persons that ever went to school. Isn't that interesting? In the 1930s, a study of 100 elementary math lessons found teacher-led note-taking, didactic questioning, a reliance on the textbook, and an extreme stress placed on abstract arithmetic and the development of computational skill. In the 1980s, a study of fifth grade classrooms found math instruction places students in the position of almost total dependence on the teacher and the textbook, with an emphasis being on rote skill. So what is happening here? What is driving this? So let's look at some of the historical evidence that will help us get a better understanding of what's happening. Um, first of all, there's this fundamental belief that developed in the early 1900s in the U.S. You can think about the demographics and the historical change at that time, but it was that there are pre-existing fixed differences in student mathematical ability that are both meaningful and measurable and that are different among different groups of people. This was a fundamental belief. Lewis Terman at Stanford University wrote Genius and Stupidity. Yes, that's the title of his book. And he related mathematics ability to race. You can guess who is the smartest in his book. Um, and he uh, also was the person to develop this wonderful system of testing some of you have alluded to. And in his view, it allowed us to classify children by their native ability. So we could put them into tracks. And he suggested five groups, the very superior, the superior, the average, the below average, and the very below average. Keep that in mind, it'll come back. Um, here's Edward Thorndike writing about psychology or arithmetic. Notice the very last sentence. No students would not understand the process of arithmetic by any means whatever. They don't get it, just give them an algorithm. And so we see that the president of NCTM wrote in the first yearbook, the increase in school population has given us a wider sampling, hence lowered the level of ability in our schools. Yes, that was the NCTM, NCTM president. Kilpatrick, who was a leader of progressivism, said, we have in the past taught algebra and geometry to too many, not to too few. This was in the 1930s. And so, What's happening is we need to develop these instruments to sort kids. And so here's the description of one of the first standardized exams. There's more problems than they can do in the given time. Each ability is going to be measured. So then we can compare individuals and put them in their right place. This is what our schooling system was built upon. So we've changed these beliefs, the Common Core Standards, NCTM's equity position, which states that all students have, should have equal access to a curriculum that supports their learning and their potential. However, in 2000 and 2002, we had a study of 300 classrooms that said mathematics lessons portray a static body of factual knowledge and focus on low-level thinking and procedures. So what's happening here? Well, there is learning happening. So remember 1878, and here's the 2000s at a blog I found. I hate math, still. Is it still two thirds? I don't know. Um, here's a creativity in terms of their uh, doing this work that was assigned to them. So certainly the student was motivated. He didn't do nothing. <laughs> Quite colorful. I hate math, again. Seems to be a recurring phrase. Um, and so, what's happening? Well, look at our CSTs. The driving principles of the state exams in this state are item difficulty and item discrimination, and that is the ability of these items to differentiate kids and separate them. If all kids did equally well on the exam, the exam would have to be rewritten, and yet we give the exams and we sort kids into, oh, it's the ghost of Terman. <laughs> we sort them into five levels, advanced, proficient, basic, below basic, very below basic. We continue to do this and we continue to track and sort our students because it's a historical legacy we have not shaken. So my question to you and my thought to you is what are we going to do to get out of this? 
We need to recognize learning as a product of historical practices. We need to demand and lead efforts to rewrite these assessments and redesign them. We need more opportunities for teachers and students to make understanding. And so I encourage you to resist and be creative in implementing better strategies. Thank you.